We've got a newborn in the house. Salam and Lady Cake had a newborn. And just look how beautiful she is. She's so cool that she lights up any room that she enters. How cool is that? <laughs> There's only one little problem though. We haven't got a name for her yet. So what do you guys think? Should we call her Little Camp or Little Lake? Does she look more like a lamp or a cake? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. <laughs> Jokes aside, welcome back to Create with Chidex. I'm Chidema and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made a lamp cake. Or is it a cake lamp? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. By the way, um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already as it helps me to get my content out to more people and I appreciate that. So thanks in advance for your help. Now join me and we'll get started. I'm using two 6 inches cakes. So I started out by leveling my cakes and then cutting them into layers. Once the cakes were leveled and cut into layers, I placed the template over each one and cut out rectangular shapes with a paring knife. These scraps I'm taking off now, I'm going to be keeping them aside. I'm not going to throw them away because I'll use them also to make up the height of my cake. Here I've got a custom built cake support stand with a wooden base cut the same size as my cake layers. So now it's time to fill and stack my layers with buttercream. Notice that I've covered the wooden base with a cake cardboard and also the threaded rod with some cling film. This is just to make both of them food safe. I've also now applied some buttercream on the baseboard, so I'm going to now start stacking my cake layers. Using my ruler, I'm trying to mark out the center of each of the layers to know where to pass the threaded rod through. For the cake scraps I'm using, I'm going to first stick them together, the three of them. I'll stick them together using some buttercream icing before I pass them through the rod. Also notice that I'm placing them somewhat at the middle of the stack so that the cake structure will be more stable. Now that I've finished stacking up all my cakes, I'll apply the first coat of buttercream to seal in the crumbs and then I'll chill it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. After crumb coating my cake, I'll put it in the freezer to chill for about 30 minutes. After the cake has been in the freezer for 30 minutes, I'll coat it one more time with buttercream, chill it for another 30 minutes in the freezer, then I'll move on to the next step. I'm going to cover the entire cake in black modelin chocolate. So I'll be covering the cake in panels instead of as a whole. I've now placed some cornflour on my surface to prevent the modeling chocolate from sticking to the surface. Next, I'll cut the panel to a size that is slightly larger than the cake side that I want to cover. I'm going to cover the sides first. So I'm covering the first one. And then I'm going to use my knife to trim it to the correct size like so I've rolled and cut out another panel for the second cake side so I'll be covering it and trimming it to size as well 
Before trimming it, I'll smoothen it with my fondant smoother. I'm going to now cover the front, the back and the top of the cake following the same process of rolling and cutting panels then attaching and trimming them down to size on the cake. Covering the top of the cake was a little bit different from the other ones. I had to make a hole at the center of the panel to allow for the threaded rod. So I passed the threaded rod through this hole in the panel. After covering all parts of the cake, I made a paste out of water and some of the leftover modeling chocolate and then using a small offset spatula, I covered up the seams and imperfections that were on the cake. Moving on to the next step, I made the lampshade using edible wafer paper and some cake dowels. So here I'm just gluing two 8 inches dowels to two 11 inches dowels to make a rectangular frame. I'm going to be making two of these frames to start the shade. I'll be using melted ISO malt to glue my dowels together. I've now made two of the rectangular frames. In this next stage, I had two A4 wafer papers of which I folded in about 1 cm of the left and right hand sides of the papers. So I'll be gluing these frames which I just made to the papers using melted chocolate. The wafer papers that I'm using for the lampshade are all edible. Similar to the first one, I'm also gluing the second frame to the second wafer paper using melted chocolate. I cut out two 8 by 6 inches edible wafer paper sheets and I'm now going to glue these sheets to the front and back parts of the lampshade that I just constructed. I'm also using melted chocolate as my glue here. After the three sheets of edible wafer paper that I glued together have dried, I will now attach the last sheet. I also cut out two 6 inches cake dowels 
and then glued them on the bottom part of the frame which I already constructed. It's not very easy to see where I'm gluing these dowels but at the end of the construction of the entire frame I'm going to show you inside it to know the locations of each one. Next I constructed an additional structure using two 10.7 inches dowels and two small spacers. So I'm now going to glue this structure to the bottom part of my frame using melted iso malt as well. I've now finished constructing the lampshade and this is what it looks like inside. Next, I rolled out a small strip of black modeling chocolate and then I used it to cover the lower part of the protruding threaded rod. I left the upper part of the rod because that's what I'm going to use to attach the lampshade. I decided to do a geometric pattern for the lamp, so I cut out a rectangular template and then using the template I cut out similar shapes from black modeling chocolate. I cut out about 3 of these geometric pieces, then I put them in the fridge for 10 minutes so that they could harden before I paint them. Using a soft brush, I'm now painting my geometric pieces with some vodka and metallic gold dust. I also painted the part of the threaded rod covered in modeling chocolate as well as the top of my cake. After painting, I attached the geometric pieces to the cake using melted chocolate. I had to cut the second geometric piece into smaller parts so that I'll be able to align it properly with the first one. To be able to put in the lights, I cut out a small piece of wood with a hole in the middle. So I used my glue gun to glue the LED lights on this piece of wood. To set up the lampshade, I'll pass the threaded rod through this gap here. Then I'll pass it through the wood sheet with the lights before screwing on the final knots to secure everything together. It was difficult to film the setup while I was doing it, so to give a better idea, this is what the setup looks like from the inside. I decided to add additional remote controlled LED lights to make the lamp brighter. And ta-da! Here's the finished lamp cake. It actually feels weird calling it a cake <laughs> because it looks so much like a lamp. And this is just to give an idea of how the cake lamp lights up in different settings. And now, as much as I feel bad doing so, I'm going to have to cut this cake. Thank you very much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!